punk graphic design broke many rules in the design industry. This iconic subculture revolutionized different design disciplines that were in need of a shakeup. Hi, my name is Laura Kyung from Envato Tats Plus, and in this video, I will show you how to design an 80s punk flyer. I've been working as a designer for over 14 years, and today I will show you how you can get rebellious with design. So before we begin, make sure to check out Envato Elements. With one subscription, you will have unlimited access to assets such as graphics, fonts, and photos used in this tutorial. There are millions of creative digital assets with simple commercial licensing, and you can cancel anytime. You can subscribe with the link in the description. And don't forget to subscribe to Envato Tats Plus for more free courses and tutorials. So let's get started. So for this tutorial, I have a folder and here I have the assets, I have the font, the scuff marks, the background, and the hand image. So head over to InDesign, create a new file, select print, we want the A4 size, and check facing pages, and here we just need to change the margin to 0.5 centimeters. Click create, and let's start by setting up some guides. Go to layout, create guides, set the rows to seven, columns to five, make sure that you fit the guides to margins and click OK. Let's add some layers so we can keep everything organized on the layers panel. I will rename this first one to background. Let's add three more. This one will be type and elements, the third one paper texture, and the last one rough texture. Let's go to Photoshop and open the head image there. In the layers panel, go to create new fill or adjustment layer black and white. This will help us keep the original integrity of the image. Select again, create new fill or adjustment layer and click on levels. Here, I just want to adjust the properties to get a really harsh contrast. That will help us later with the color half tone. So let's save this image as a JPEG. I will add an R at the front. Close this file and open the JPEG image in Photoshop again. Go to Image, Mode, Grayscale. So the half tone is only in black and white. And then go to Filter, Pixelate, Color Half Tone. These are the values and these are just the normal values. You can play around if you want. Let's save this image as a JPEG and now we'll add an R2 at the front. We can close Photoshop and now we can go back to InDesign. Select the bracket layer, press F to select the rectangle frame tool and create a rectangle that fits the margins of the flyer. Let's locate the half tone image and drag it into the frame. Using the direct selection tool, we can resize the image and move it around and just place it where you feel it's best. Remember that this is a punk flyer, so rules are out the window pretty much. So this looks good to me. And now let's duplicate this. Press Option and click to drag. And again, you can resize the image with the direct selection tool. I will do that twice. Let's hide some of these layers and only keep the type and elements activated. Press T to bring up the text tool, create a text box and let's add the. Here I want to choose Bergen text italic Set the size to 61. And using the direction tool, we will just move this a little bit higher. Let's make this smaller. And I just want to make the text box white. Duplicate this by pressing Option and drag. And let's add World Tour. Bergen text regular. Set the size to 40. Set the tracking to 200. So punk flyers usually have a mix and match of uppercase and lowercase fonts. So for this second text, 
we'll use all caps. Duplicate this frame again, and let's add the name of the band, marionettes. Set the text to bold, 85 points. Let's take the tracking out. And set the color to ED1C24. Let's duplicate this again and add a date. Set the font to Bergen Text Bold, size to 24 points, a beginning and an end date. Select all of these text frames and press Command B to open the text frame options. And I just want to set the inset spacing to 0.3 centimeters. Let's readjust this. This will help us give a margin to the text so we make sure that it is legible. So duplicate the text frame. And for this, we'll use the strike through option. Set the size to 18, the tracking to 620, and the color to red. Let's make this a little bit smaller and we can start adding the bands at the bottom. I'm adding slash symbols at the front of each band. We're talking about punk flyers and they are usually rebellious and unconventional. Let's put that closer. And now we can add the date also again and in a different format, just so it adds more of a graphic element in a ragged look. Set the size to 53, take the tracking out and only use the stroke color. Get rid of the fill color. Duplicate it and then we can place this up here. We're just adding small details now, some slash symbols. We can make it really big and place it here on the right side. Perfect, so that's for the text. And now let's add some other graphic elements in the form of rectangles. So I want to add something here to draw attention to the name of the band. We can use other colors. We can highlight World Tour this way. Just make sure that it's all the way to the back. And we can go adjusting things. And again, there's no right or wrong. There are very little rules to follow and the most important one would be legibility. So here I am adding elements that will just help the viewer direct their eyes to very specific elements. Let's create a grid. Something really easy. Select it all. You can group it by pressing Command G and then resize as you'd like. And I'm also filling up some white space and some gaps here. Let's duplicate this. Hold down Command and drag. And the same here. Let's add something here at the bottom to help balance the whole poster. And then to end it, a red rectangle at the bottom to make sure that we have some heaviness down there and not everything is at the top. Let's add some paper textures. Locate the textures on your computer, select background number 10, and drag it into InDesign. Resize this by pressing Shift Command. Make sure that you have the paper texture layer selected. Let's show the background layer and lock type and elements to make sure that we don't move anything. Go to the Effects panel and change the blending mode to Multiply. Duplicate the layer by pressing Command C, Command V, and we can get a stronger texture effect. 
select the rough texture layer, locate the edgeless scuff textures. And here I will be using the PNG format and files A4, B3, and C1. So select all three and drag them into InDesign and place them on the flyer. Here, feel free to resize and move as you wish. I have found that the best effect is when you have most of the scuff marks and ideally over a big block of ink. So in this case, it will be the rectangles on the edge. So we can have some of the text and it, this can be almost like white paint. So let's move this around. We have a nice composition here on the left where the date is. To export the file, head over to File, Export. Choose the location. Let's change the name. And here I want to start by saving the Adobe PDF print. On this new window, select Press Quality and then select the Marks and Bleeds option from the left side. Check all printer's marks and use Document Bleed settings. And now for web, you can go to file, export, name the file, and set the format to Adobe PDF Interactive. Click save, save, and you are all set. Awesome. And there you have your 80s punk flyer. All punk flyers were famous for their DIY quality, and you have learned how to apply that ruggedness to a poster. So if you like this video and would like to see more, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe if you aren't already. And don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of any new inspiring videos. If you're looking to learn even more, why not check out some of the other excellent tutorials that Envato Tats Plus has to offer. I am Laura Kyung and from all of us at Envato, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.